And I'm joined now in the studio by our religious affairs correspondent, Martin Geck. Uh, Martin, first of all, what is the significance of this trip to Ireland for the Pope? What's at stake for him? The context is a family reunion. It happens every three years and it's a way to celebrate both the family as an institution, but also as a foundational value. So that's uh, this world, world families exactly. meeting. This mm -hmm. is the reason why the Pope is going there. Obviously, um, a lot of the emphasis on this pope, of this pope, on the on the family has been on children, and this, of course, in the context of the current um, scandals and further revelations, makes this trip a very sensitive one. Also, because Ireland itself is one of the epicenters uh, of this drama. I mean, when the when the scandal began to surface. Um, it showed its legal, its, its global, its global reach, but it made Ireland really one of the focal points because of the sheer amount of like priests and the influence of the Catholic Church in the country. That's right, and um, abuse survivors um, will be watching this visit uh, very closely. Um, he'll be meeting some of those abuse survivors during the visit. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Martin about that uh, in a second. First, though, this report on how past clerical abuse has been affecting the Irish. Belita was abused by family members and a priest when she was just a child. She lived like a prisoner for more than 10 years in this Catholic reform school in Waterford, where she was beaten and tormented by nuns. They talked her into believing that it was her fault she was raped. Until now, not one of Belita's abusers have been brought to justice. You know, I think they covered up an awful lot and they're still covering up an awful lot. And I think they always will, you know, so... I, you know, I, I really don't think about a lot of things like that. I just, I have no religion. Stories of mass child abuse by priests have left many Irish people disgusted with the church. 78% continue to call themselves Catholic, but the country has changed since Pope John Paul II visited. Pope Francis may find a less enthusiastic welcome. It would be a different tone. I don't think everyone would be jumping for joy. Yeah. Be, uh, obviously, a lot of people are quite sceptical of like, generally religion now. And, but I, get the thing, it's, I think it's no harm. I think it's good. Many here are hoping that Pope Francis will give them good reason to make peace with the church by taking concrete action on the abuse scandals. Ireland's Prime Minister will receive the pontiff at Dublin Castle. He's promised to raise the issue with the Pope. But everything that we know about child sex abuse over the past couple of decades, uh, we know from victims, uh, we know from advocates, uh, we know from government reports, including many of our own. Uh, we don't tend to know it from the church admitting its own sins. Uh, and I think that would be a very good place to start. 500,000 faithful are expected to descend on Phoenix Park for mass with the Pope. They'll be hoping for much more than just his blessing. Still with me, uh, Martin Gack, our religious affairs um, uh, correspondent. Martin, uh, we've been talking uh, to one Irish abuse survivor uh, who doesn't believe, he just told us that he doesn't believe that Pope Francis is fully committed to the task of tackling uh, this abuse scandal within the uh, Catholic Church. What's your view? Is he committed? A, it seems to me that this pope is committed or as committed as sort of the head of the church can be in the conditions of, in the institutional conditions in which the church exists. This is to say it's a massive operation, it's a massive institution in which most of the people that have actually operated at a clerical level have been there for like 20, 30, 40 years. So the problem that the church has is not simply sort of addressing the issue itself, which is addressing the crimes finding redress from the crimes, finding a way to stop further crimes, finding a way to stop the cover-up of those crimes. But on top of that, there is a question as to how to change institutional culture within the church. And that, of course, these are all things that are entwined. It's extremely difficult for just one man in a six-year period to actually change this. Nonetheless, it has to be said that for a papacy that has been talking about zero tolerance for six straight years, 12 years after this came to light, or 14 years actually after it came to light, the progress is really, uh, is really meager. Well, indeed. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a huge ship that he's trying to turn around. I, I hear what you're saying. What could he do, what should he do in Ireland to, to send out the signal that he is committed to change that institutional culture within the Catholic Church? The theme has been very clear and it has been emerging with more and more force over the last couple of days in Pennsylvania. The Pope has to go up on a podium over the next two days and tell Ireland and tell the world that in fact the Vatican will turn, will turn evidence, records, documents, 
to national authorities and the justice across different jurisdictions. This is really the direct item in the agenda. I think that it's a very tall order, given the institutional conditions, but a promise to actually prosecute this in courts of laws around the world is really what is, what is directly in front of him. Okay, Martin, always good to talk to you. DW's religious affairs correspondent, Martin Gack.